Hi, I'm Rogene Van Way. I live in Apache Junction, Arizona. I've been here since 1980. I have four children and seven grandchildren. Yeah, Rogene has had uh, heart disease for oh, six or seven years. Um, originally diagnosed when she had uh, some chest pain and had a stent done in another hospital. Um, I started seeing her after she presented to the hospital with uh, an episode of acute coronary syndrome. I couldn't hardly do anything without having the chest pain. I could not walk, just to walk from the, the parking lot to the doc doctor's office. I, I couldn't do. We brought her in and her cath uh, was really interesting. Her previous stents angiographically looked like they were wide open, uh, but she had a stenosis in the circumflex artery just upstream from one of her stents and a stenosis in the right coronary downstream from one of her stents. And so not knowing which was really the culprit, uh, we decided to do FFR on both lesions. So uh, we first picked the right coronary lesion. I, didn't, I thought that one was less significant. Uh, so we did an FFR on it, and the reading of the FFR was really normal. It was 0.98. Likely wasn't the culprit, and she likely wasn't going to benefit from stenting it. And then when we did the FFR on the uh, circumflex, it was 0.78 even before we gave her the adenosine. So highly significant lesion. When we did the intravascular ultrasound, what we found was the stent that had been previously placed was um, not fully deployed. Uh, it was fully opposed to the vessel, but the vessel was slightly bigger than what the stent that was put in. And then we found the new lesion that was proximal uh, was very calcified and really a high-grade lesion. Um, and so we were able to see the size of the vessel distally, the size of the vessel proximally, uh, to plan our intervention. Yeah, so what we did is we, we brought in a, a non-compliant balloon. We dilated the um, previously placed stent, also dilated the area that was calcified prior to putting the other stent in. Then we deployed another stent across it. We did another intravascular ultrasound run, which then allows us to see the distal stent, the proximal stent, really make sure we don't have any dissections, make sure that we going up to high pressures with a real calcified lesion that we uh, were safe to complete the procedure and be done. I've been very lucky, I really have, and I owe that to Dr. Ambrosa and the equipment he's found that would work. People who are older, like Rogine, who have grandchildren, their, you know, their sons and daughters, their, one of their big concerns is their, their parents being able to see their children, and that interaction is, is, you know, for our, our older patients, that's really what they live for. I feel that I can see my granddaughter graduate, my grandson graduate, and go on to college. And before, I didn't think that I would make it. To do a procedure that has a low risk and have a patient come back and say, now I can go shopping with my granddaughter, or I can now go walk to my grandson's baseball game and go across the field where I couldn't do that before. That's a big deal for people. I mean, aside from the, you know, the reduction in heart attacks and reduction in death, that's the, the living part of it that is probably the most gratifying.